The Acura Integra has long been a Japanese car legend. And here we get a new version because Acura realized that trying to sell people in ILX or whatever that thing is called, doesn't matter. Honestly, the fact that I can't remember the name of it sort of proves my point. Nobody wants to buy an ILX or whatever it's called. Everybody wants to buy an Integra, don't they? Well, that's the funny thing because Honda put this car out on the market and everybody complained about it because it's a rebadged Civic. Uh, isn't that what the Acura Integra has always been? This is one example of enthusiast purist controversy where they hate on a new car that really didn't make that much sense to me. Everybody talked down on this car for being just a cynical Honda rebadge. That's always been the Integra, folks. It started life as a Honda Civic, and then they rebadged it, put a different body on it, and a slightly more luxurious interior. Acura Integra, everybody, that's what this car is. But still, Honda remembered to put in a bit of enthusiast flair into this particular one. This Integra is the A-Spec with technology package. Some of you might be hearing that thinking, why is a technology package important? Well, that means it's available with a six-speed manual transmission, which is what this car has. If you want to get an Acura Integra with a CVT, go ahead, you can do that. Don't talk to me, I don't want you in my life. If you want to get an Integra with a true enthusiast manual transmission, you have to get the A-Spec with the technology package or the new Type S. So the Acura Integra is here and I've always wanted to drive this particular car and today we finally get the chance to experience it. So first let's take a review type tour of the Integra A-Spec with technology package. That is a mouthful. First off, let's talk about what this car actually is. Like I said, this is a rebadge of the Honda Civic, which might sound pretty bad, but then you realize that this is actually a rebadge of the Honda Civic Si, the mid-level sporty version with 200 horsepower from its 1.5 liter VTEC four-cylinder under the hood. So this is, yes, a Honda Civic rebadge, but it's a rebadge of the better, sportier Honda Civic, not the base Honda Civic. So every Integra, except for the Type S, is underneath a Honda Civic Si. And if you want to get a Honda Civic Si, but for some reason you can't handle a three pedal driving experience, again, don't talk to me, I don't want you in my life, then you can get an Integra with the CVT. That's the only way you can get a Honda Civic Si driving experience with the lame CVT transmission. What Honda did is they took the Civic Si and they fit this beautiful hatchback body onto it and renamed it the Integra. And honestly, I think this is a much better base level model for Acura to use than the ILX or whatever that other car's called, I keep forgetting. And like I said, it is a hatchback. So not only is it more beautiful in my opinion than a Honda Civic Si, it's also more practical. So let's go back there and talk boring practicality stuff. All right, so like I said, the Acura Integra is indeed a five door hatchback, which is nicely practical. Back here, as you can see, the A-Spec badge is there proudly on the tailgate to remind everybody that you have the better Integra. But if you're looking for the actual Integra logo, that, at least the script for it, is stenciled into the bumper. It's not a proud badge like the Acura badge, the A-Spec badge. Honestly, at first glance, from a bit of distance, you wouldn't actually notice that that's there. It's just a little bit more integrated. I believe that is a Acura Integra hallmark. Not only is the Integra script stenciled into the bumper, but the Acura script is also embedded in the taillights. You wouldn't notice it until you look really close, but it's there, and I guess it's a nice little Easter egg. So with that, let's move to this cargo area lift up the tailgate and you can see that it is manually operated, no electronic system to lift it up and then close it again, which honestly is nice to see because every car has some sort of electric assist to open and close the trunk, even on cars that don't really need it. Nice to see a manual release there, but I guess that also goes to say that it's not as well equipped as it could be, but honestly, don't think Integra people would care. Look inside and you can see quite a large cargo area. It's deep, wide, and decently tall. You could probably fit a lot more in the back of an Integra than you could in a Civic. That's just the hatchback thing. It's always gonna be more practical. So that's nice to have. And I'm sure you could fit all of your ridiculous Honda boy mods in here. 
could probably fit a fart can exhaust back here if you fold down the rear seats and all of your Hoonigan stickers, they can fit back here. Your big fake wing can also fit back here. So you can fit all of your mods for your car and all of your other Honda friends back here. As for features, well, there's a storage net there and now I'm out of things to say. So let's move forward. Here we are getting into the back seat of the Acura Integra. And the first thing I notice is that it's not super big back here, but that's kind of what you expect from a car in this segment. I'm six foot three. This seat is in my driving position. My knees are definitely touching. I have absolutely no foot room. And if I put my head back, no headroom. So it's best for kids, but tall people can fit back here. It's not too bad. One thing that is there to complain about is the fact that the quality difference between the back seats and the front seats is noticeably apparent. Yes, you have these obnoxiously red seats. It's an obnoxiously red interior, but up front, the seats in the center are lined in Alcantara or suede, some sort of suede type material. And they also have black accents on them. Back here, they're just red leather seats. There's no design to them. No black accents, no suede inserts, nothing. They're just basic red leather seats. Definitely more care was put into the front seats than the back seats. And that shows some cost cutting for sure. Also, this door panel has just plastic right here, whereas up front, you've got a lot more aluminum and nicer looking materials. It's not real aluminum, I imagine, but up there, it's a nicer looking door panel. And quality isn't great. I mean, I'd expect more from a luxury Acura, but Acura hasn't always been the top luxury brand, obviously. It's a lot of Honda back here. Definitely feels like I'm sitting in a Honda that somebody for some reason ordered in a red interior. Would be nice if it had rear climate back here of some sort or at least vents, but it doesn't. Also, there's a transmission tunnel, which doesn't make any sense to me in this car. I believe the Integra is front wheel drive only. Why is there a transmission tunnel there? Is that for the exhaust or something? Doesn't make any sense at all. See back here, it has enough room, but is definitely lacking some features, definitely lacking some care. You can definitely tell that the accountants took one look at the backseat of the Integra and thought, hmm, yes, we can save money with this. We can save money there. We can save money right here on the seats. We can save money there. We can save money up here. I mean, you can tell where the accountants have gotten their dirty, greasy fingers into the mix. That usually means that the car is definitely not as good as it could be. So yeah, back here, it's fine. If you put your kids back here, they won't complain. Most non-car friends won't care or notice anything. They'll be fine. So it's okay, I guess. Up front in the Acura Integra, and you can definitely tell it's a bit nicer up here. These seats, once again, have the suede Alcantara inserts and black accents. This door panel has a little bit more style. It's got this definitely real aluminum right here. It doesn't feel plastic at all, but it's a little bit more styly up here. And you have Honda's famous weird honeycomb air vents in the Integra like you have in the CRV, the Pilot, pretty much every Honda now. These honeycomb air vents are in here, so you can definitely tell that it's Honda-based. If everything else, including the Integra name, didn't already tell you that it was Honda-based, but yeah, they look cool, I guess. They look fine, nothing really that big of a deal, but what is a big deal is the fact that Honda didn't skimp out on giving the Acura Integra the transmission that it needs, a six-speed manual. Again, this is only available on the A-Spec with the technology package. Don't ask me why, I have no clue why it's the technology package that features technically less technology, but I guess it does have an auto rev matching feature, which is fine, and that works pretty well. Auto rev matching features are always really flattering, makes the car easier to drive, but while you're driving it with the auto rev match feature on, you definitely feel like a bit of a cheater. You also have real cup holders back here with inserts that are a bit more trustworthy. They're also sunken down into the center right here, which means that if you spill a drink, it's less likely to go into buttons, less likely to go all over here. It's just centered into this little area. So that's a nice little thing that they did. Moving forward from that, you have selectable drive modes right next to the gear selector and your drive modes are comfort, normal, and sport. Nice and simple. But what's funny is when you go from comfort to normal to sport and then you try to cycle back to comfort by pressing the selector in the same direction, it makes an angry noise at you. Like, how dare you? They could easily program it to just go back to comfort from sport, but no, absolutely not. Instead, they programmed an angry noise. 
doesn't make much sense. Also, you have an individual drive mode, which I imagine is configurable. So it's a fourth drive mode and that's always nice to have. But in a car like this, drive modes aren't really that important, but I guess if you want it, it's there. There is an electronic parking brake, which in an Integra is a little bit unfortunate, I know. But again, like I said in the Hun Shelter Z4 video, the most important thing, three pedals and a manual transmission is there, so we can't complain too much, at least we have the manual. Upwards from that, you have basic climate control that is nice because all of your controls are there and you don't have to go into some stupid sub menu it's right there also your heated seats are buttons right there as well upward from that you have honda's infotainment system which i always thought was literally the bare minimum of infotainment it has no personality put into it it feels like it's showing its age it definitely doesn't feel like it's of this decade it feels like 2010s. In a car like this, I imagine infotainment is the most important thing. So you do have a rotary volume knob because Honda tried to put a stupid touch sensitive volume dial where you just press a button repeatedly to lower or raise the volume and people trashed them for that. So they put in an actual volume dial, which is nice. And it's up there. In the center, I have a three spoke steering wheel, which definitely isn't the exact same steering wheel as the Honda Civic with an Acura and a spec badge put on. Definitely couldn't be the same as the Civic. That's absolutely for sure. Or every single Honda that's offered, but it's a nice steering wheel and it's comfortable to hold. So you can't complain about it at all. It also does have red stitching in it which makes it look really nice. Forward from that, there is a digital gauge cluster. It's fully digital. How configurable is it? You can change stuff in each individual gauge, but it's not super configurable. It's not great, but I mean, I guess it's nice. You can do some stuff with this gauge cluster, but not as much as some cars. But again, to me, infotainment and a digital gauge cluster and how configurable it is, I don't really care. It's worth noting for people that are watching the video that might actually care. But again, the most important thing, six speed manual is right here. And let me tell you, this is one of the best manual transmissions I've ever had the pleasure of rowing through the gears on. Every shift is beautifully notchy. It feels nice and tight and it has auto red matching. So it's flattering as you drive it. It is an absolutely amazing gear shifter. It feels so good. And there's absolutely no excuse at all for opting for the CVT Integra outside of only having one leg. I mean, if you have two legs and you can use them, you have to get the manual in this car. It's so important and it is an absolutely amazing fantastic shifter the clutch is a little bit harder to get used to but it's totally fine i can't complain about the clutch and i definitely can't complain about this shifter it's awesome let's move up front and look at the engine underneath the hood here you can see honda's 1.5 liter vtec turbocharged four-cylinder engine which again is shared with the honda civic si in this it makes a clean rounded off 200 horsepower and red lines at 6,500 RPM. Doesn't sound all that great, but it's a Honda engine, so it's gonna be reliable, it's gonna work, and it's got plenty of power. It transfers its power to the front wheels only via a six-speed manual, like we've seen, or a hideous CVT. But if you want the Civic Type R powertrain, that is standard in the Integra Type S, but what we have here is the basic engine in the Integra, which is the upgraded engine in the Civic. And it's nice to look underneath this hood and not see plastic covers everywhere. Everything is exposed. I don't remember the last new car I looked at that had exposed ignition coils that you could just get right to. I could unplug each of them right now if I wanted to. Don't have to remove some stupid plastic cover. It's right there. So I imagine working on this car is easier because you already have one step taken out, the engine's right there, and it's ready to be worked on, ready to be modified, and ready to be hooked up to an annoying exhaust so you wake up all of your neighbors at three in the morning and they hate you, but at least you're dropping the house value on the street, so rent is a little bit cheaper. Also, the battery has this weird cover over it, like they're almost worried that you're gonna touch the battery cables, which I'm sure you wouldn't be able to do or anything, you know, it's right there. It doesn't really make that much sense, but that's something that I noticed. So yeah, I've run out of things to talk about and I would like to go and row through the gears in this Integra. So how about we go and do that?
driving the Integra A-Spec with the technology package, or as I like to call it, the Integra A-Spec with the cool option, the right transmission, the six-speed manual, which is what every Integra should be optioned with, no excuse. I could understand the controversy with the Integra when it first dropped if they refused to put a manual transmission in it, but I don't get why everybody at first was complaining about it because it is a rebadged Honda Civic. That's always what the Integra has been, people. I don't know what to tell you. It doesn't seem like people are complaining about it anymore, but it kind of seems like people have forgotten about it. Nobody's talking about it. But it's still a new, nice, manual transmission car that's full-on enthusiast spec, and nobody really seems to talk about it. Even the Type S, the Type S came out, came with a bit of a stir, doesn't seem like anybody cares anymore. The feel of this manual transmission, it's so good. This thing drives so well, and this transmission is so good. Honda's always been great with manuals, and this is no exception. This is one of the best manuals I've ever had the pleasure of rowing through the gears on. It's just so beautifully notchy. I just want to shift for fun. You can't say that about most manuals. The only other manual that I've wanted to just shift gears just for the feel of it is the space ball in the Volvo V70R and a 60R, I guess. That manual was my favorite manual of all time. And then I hopped in this and I'm thinking, you know, is this better? It very well might be. It's got the exact same notchy feel and tightness that I loved in the space ball, but it's also got the added benefit of auto rev matching. And it's also got a really nice satisfying turbo surge to it. Definitely feels like a Honda. It feels like VTEC kicked in. It's got that Honda feel to it where you really have to rev it out to get the most out of it. If you're into Hondas, you'll be into this. It's so good. And I can't imagine an Acura ILX is a quarter this much fun to drive. This thing steering feels really nice and precise nice and darty. Their ride quality, pretty good. I can't complain over bumps. What I'm in is a perfectly livable, reliable, everyday car that happens to be an absolute blast to drive. Yeah, the sound isn't very good. I mean, if you really rev it out to get the most out of this car, you'll be disappointed by the sound. It just, it doesn't, from in here, doesn't sound very good. Auto rev match in a second. Oh yeah. A little bit of understeer. <laughs> when you get close to the red line, the tachometer flashes red. It's like a rudimentary shift light almost. <laughs> it's not like a shift light that builds and then flashes. It's just the tachometer flashing at you saying, hey, time to shift up. This is no K-series motor, which maybe that's why people don't really like the new Integra because it can't live up to the legend of the previous 90s Integra and the Type R with that K-series four-cylinder, and I get that, but I mean, I think they did a pretty good job. You have to say they did a good job with this car. They could have really messed it up. They could have skipped out on the manual transmission, but they didn't. It's right here, I'm rowing through it, and it feels good. You definitely feel that VTEC kicked in, yo. <laughs> it doesn't feel fast either. I mean, who's surprised by that? It's only 200 horsepower from a four cylinder. It doesn't feel that fast and it has a tendency to understeer when you push it through turns, but that's another Integra thing, <laughs> to be honest. The Integra Type R of the 90s was, yes, a brilliant driving car, I'm sure, and a total JDM legend, but wasn't really that fast and understeered. This Integra A-Spec technology package is pretty much the same. So I'm curious to know if anybody's watching the video and they're an avid Integra purist, what they think of this car. And especially if they have both one of the legendary old Integras and one of these. And I want to know what their thoughts are on the new one, because I'm not 
a Honda guy. I don't know a whole lot about them, but what I do know is that they have fantastic manual transmissions, nice and reliable, and this Integra feels really nice to drive, easily daily drivable, 100%. I mean, that's what it's designed as. It's a nicer Civic Si. But, I mean, it, interior quality isn't up to my standards. I know it's not exactly a Mercedes or a Rolls Royce or anything, but I would expect the interior to be a bit nicer. But it's nice to have a nice driving manual car that is sort of under the radar. Ever since this car came out, I wanted to try it out and I wanted to try the manual. And I can definitely say I am not disappointed. This car drives amazingly. If you're gonna get an Integra, get it with the manual, please. We need to convince these automakers that there's real money in making enthusiast cars. And so far, people aren't doing that enough. So yeah, with that, I'm gonna end that video there. Like, subscribe, do all the normal YouTube stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.